Hey everyone, this is the presents episode, and I have some for everyone. Before we get to unwrap our presents though, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank my incredible contributors again. First of all, Donald X, thank you so much for the time and effort you put into assembling the card history pictures and of course telling us all the stories. You were so game for this from moment one, so helpful and so generous, I really can't thank you enough. As a present, the bards have a bonus poem for you to share, based on a classic by Lewis Carroll. Speaking of my bards, I am in awe of what you did this year. It was such a joy to watch you work and see the fireworks go off when you were writing and inspiring one another and how you tweaked and polished and argued and struggled with each and every rhyme and with each other. And I feel like I pushed a button and a whole world came into being. Thank you all so much. I am so proud of you. Your present and the present to our listeners is a very special card history. Let's go, Sir X. Today, we're going to talk about Shaman. So this is a card from Plunder, and at the point at which you, you put up this recording, people have already seen it. So it will not be an exciting additional preview. Possibly people, you know, ideally people will have the whole set. So it really, you know, really won't be a secret. But uh, to you today, this is an utterly fresh card that you uh, have no idea what nonsense it will be up to. And it'll be an amazing punchline because, you know, uh, it will keep changing, and then suddenly, well, we're done. That's it. That card That card went out. So this card starts off saying, each other player gains a curse. The next time you play an attack card, plus two coins. So this is the whole mechanic in Plunder. Durations that say, the next time something happens, do something. And this idea came from one of the cards that tried out for the Sailor slot in Seaside 2nd Edition. And I decided, oh, I could make a whole bunch of those. And so I uh, saved it. I didn't do it in Seaside. This card starts off trying to be one of those. And this is not a very good premise the next time you play an attack card. Uh, you know, if you can just buy two shamans so that they can each trigger, them, trigger each other. And uh, it immediately changes to something more interesting. But that's how it started. And so the next version is uh, the next time you gain trash or discard a card in your action phase, plus two coins. So now in order to get your shaman back, you have to do one of those things, right? So the shaman will just sit in play turn after turn until you, you manage to gain trash or discard a card in your action phase. And if you never do, it'll just sit in play. Uh, and I'm just, I'm just aware now, of course, like, again, everyone else knows all about these next time cards but you do not <laughs> and just sit in play waiting for the thing to happen uh and so uh and then they go away that turn so anyway it's possible that some games of course there is no way to do any of those things in which case shaman was just a one-time curse like ill-gotten gains and if there is then you know you jump through that hoop so you can get your witch back so the next version gives you it drops the uh, next time stuff, and it's each of the player gains a curse at the start of your next turn plus three coins, so a conventional duration which, until then, when any player trashes a card, they set it aside and discard it at end of turn. So that does two things. One is that it, it uh, prevents you from trashing curses, right? Once there's a a shaman in play most turns, you know, you're stuck with all these curses. If you trash them, you just get them back. And the other thing it does is it lets you, like, remodel province to province and get your province back. But it does this for everybody. Now, I'm trying to remember exactly how this story goes. This is, like, the most recent story I'm telling. Um, but it's still, you know, way back. <laughs> It's still six months ago or something, right? It's, uh, anyway, there you have it. So it's this, this premise. And, uh, and I, know, I know what part comes next, but not if there's more wording changes in between. So let's see, the next one says, until then, when a player trashes one of their cards, they discard it. So it's just messing with the wording. It's trying not to set it aside. That will turn out not to work. So the next one says, when a player trashes one of their cards, they discard it and clean up. And what is that fixing? 
That's trying, that's preventing loops, I'm pretty sure. And then the next one says, until then, when any player tries to one of their cards, they set it aside and discard it and clean up. See, you had to say set it aside. So this was the card, I'm pretty sure he said, looking again at the next card. Uh, yeah, this was the card for a while, this sixth shaman. And at one point, there were a few times during work on this set where a Tracer, who, uh, who was a playtester in real life for, the, for this expansion, where Tracer like went through the cards and complained about some of them. And so one of these late times, this is late in the going for the set. Like the, the set is looking great, but maybe a few things still want to change. And so one of the times he singled this card out and the specific problem was that maybe somebody gets to trash their, you know, two of their estates or something right at the beginning of the game. And then there's Shaman in play every turn, so no one else can ever trash anything. And he did not like that experience. You know, the, the luck of being the person who got the tiny amount of trashing. So, the next version says, each of the world gains a curse, so start your next turn, plus two coins, in games using this. When any player trashes one of their cards, they set aside and discard and clean up. So now, the whole business where you can't trash curses, but can remodel province to province and keep your province, is just true the whole game. And uh, there's no little window where somebody could get rid of an estate. So that's that version of the card, he said. Then, there are multiple problems with this card. Let's see what this next card does. Each of the player gains a curse from the trash if the supply has none. The next time you trash a card, you may put it into your hand. So now it's saying you can have the fun of remodeling your province to province, but other people don't get that. It doesn't prevent you from trashing anymore, but it does mean that it will keep giving curses all game because if you trash them, they just come back. And that's a that's a very old concept, uh, giving curses from the trash that I tried long ago. And it, it has a, a huge flaw, which is that the experience of never getting rid of your curses is one we have all had endlessly. Because some games, there's a witch and there's no way to trash your curses. And so there's no point to making a card that specifically does that. That specifically says you're not going to be able to get rid of your curses this game. Uh, because it's not a new experience. It's just something we've, we've endlessly done. So, uh, so that's why this version gets rid of that. It does, it does keep feeding you curses, but you can get rid of them all, right? You can trash down to to no junk, and then they give you one curse and you trash it. So that's what's going on there. And then it also has, it's still trying to preserve some of the joy of this remodel business. And now it's back to being a next time ability. And so the penultimate one says, each other player gains a curse at the start of your next turn, plus three coins. In games using this at the start of your turn, gain a card from the trash costing up to six. And this was another idea at the same time as the previous one, and uh, we immediately liked it way better. Uh, so just there's this rule, all game, you're going to be gaining some junk from the trash every turn. Sometimes there's something good in the trash, and you can gain one of those. Of course, this has like funny interactions with so many cards. Like if there's a, a knight, then you, know, you trash their card, but then on their turn, they take it back from the trash. Uh, you know, you don't get a window where you get to do it. Or if it's in multiplayer, somebody gets to take it. Um, but, of course, sometimes there's too much good stuff in the trash due to, for whatever reason so that, uh, so that it, can get, it can come back around to you. Or sometimes you can gain something from the trash at the start of your turn. Like, you can, you can call Transmogrify and trash something and immediately gain that card back uh, instead of having to take a junk, which can also be Hugely important. Um, anyway, so I think last footnote at this point, enters our story and complains, why is this card a witch? Because again, we know this whole business of like giving out curses and uh, you can't get rid of them isn't anything new. And really this card wanted to be a trasher so that there would always be a way to put stuff into the trash because it's sad if you have this and nothing's going to be in the trash anyway. Uh, so the final version is... And now it's down to costing two. <laughs> plus one action, plus one coin. You may trash a card from your hand. And games using this at the start of your turn, gain a card from the trash costing up to six. 
Uh, so it trashes stuff, but it, it essentially you can think of this also, and I, I imagine people will, as a replacement for ambassador. Because you go, you know, I shaman an estate, and then at the start of their turn, they gain the estate. So you, you pass the estate to them. But it's much different from Ambassador, of course, because, like, it's not cumulative in multiplayer. You're still only getting one junk a turn, no matter how much junk is put into the trash. Anyway, there it is, shaman. And it's so cool. <laughs> Twas brigand and the smithy troves did hireling gamble astrolabe. All impy were the sacred groves and the tomb rats upgrabe. Beware the grubber rock, my son, the plays that gain, the plays that trash. Beware the magpie split and shun the groomiest bandit stash. He took his orchard hoard in hand. Long time the banksome foe he sought. So rested he by the throne throne tree and stood a while in thought. And as a banish bought he could, the grubber rock, with gifts of flame, came wisping through the bargy woods, and bobbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through, the orchard trade went tracker jack. He left it spent, and with its tent, he went triumphing back. And hast thou trained the grubber rock? Come to my alms, my reapish boy. O oh, labja stay, sun boon, delay, he portaled in his joy. "'Twas brigand and the smithy troves did hireling gamble astrolabe. All impy were the sacred groves, and the tomb rats upgrabe." This is Shower's dominionized version of Lewis Carroll's Jabberwocky. And now, surprise! You bards inspired Donald X to write a little something himself, and here it is. Ode to Bureaucrat Another nine-card board to play, it's bureaucrat to my dismay. Everything it does is wrong, puts silvers where they don't belong. Attacking plans, but all I see is trying to top-deck garbage we put in the trash two turns ago. A dud to everyone, and so, it's no surprise that now it's gone. What's that you say? It lingers on? Well, what do you know? I see it, yes. Just barely good enough, I guess. There's gardens, er, and maybe more, some tiny bit of fun in store. You know, I've come to terms with it. Not every card's a perfect fit. A third edition might do it in, but one of these losers had to win. Thanks again, everyone, for helping me put together the ultimate advent calendar this year. I couldn't be happier. Take care, and I will see you all next year. The game has ended. Bye! Bye!